Hey there, welcome to this flood flow tutorial where I will be just guiding you through how to build a mildly complex UI um, or simple UI, whichever. My name is Andrew, I'm the head of design and I love building in Flutterflow. Um, I'm not an engineer, but as far as UI stuff goes, I want to teach you guys how to design sort of beautiful UIs within Flutterflow because I feel it's very easy. So we're going to design this screen um, and I'm going to just go through the steps that it takes in order to get this. So we're going to add a new page two, and you can use a template. We have <clears throat> 60 or 70 templates here. Um, we're giving you the ability to also apply your theme to the template um, as you use it. But for now, we're just going to create a new page. So first thing we see this app bar. Uh, we have a few varieties of app bars. You can easily change this app bar. This is basically the top bar in your application. Um, and it's important to use one because some phones like iPhone 10s, 13s, 11s <laughs> um, have safe area up here um, and your app bar will automatically adjust. So you don't need to um, adapt your designs for that. So we have four options. We have the large header. Um, you can change this to so, you know, a title one. Uh, we have our title two as our default. We have the large header with back button and then center and left aligned. So you can change these, you can cycle through them. Um, you can set the default one that you like in the nav settings. You can also set the default styling for your text and background. So we're just gonna select this. We're gonna change it to the primary background, which is the same as the page. So. And then uh, we're gonna build this application in light and dark mode. We're gonna use the theme colors that are automatically provided by Flutterflow. So in order to get the design we want, we're gonna change this to title one and we're gonna say clubs, cool. And the next thing we wanna do is grab an icon button for the top right. So scroll down, grab the icon button, put it in the actions area of your app bar. And then let's go ahead and give it like 12 pixels padding. Let's change the icon. You can upload your own icons or use the material or uh, font awesome icons that are automatically provided. So we do have the ability to add custom icons, which is very cool. And I would highly suggest using them. So the first thing we wanna do is build this uh, horizontal scrolling list view. So in order to do that, and since we're gonna have a vertical list view underneath, what we're going to do first is we're going to drag container in here because our horizontal scrolling list view will actually need to be wrapped in a container with a set height. So dragging container, go ahead and make the width infinity, which will just span it all the way across. We're going to set the height of that to 420 pixels. For the background color, we're just going to clear it so that we don't have anything you know, constraining uh, the color. We could just set it as the same as the page, but no need. Next, let's go ahead and drag a list view in here. Instead of primary, let's do shrink wrap, and then the axis will be horizontal. Cool. The next thing we wanna do is drag a container in. Okay. We want to set this container width to 270 pixels. Let's set the fill color to secondary background, which will be white in our case. Um, the way I structure my themes is the primary background will always be the default page background, which is usually an off white or a gray, like a light, very light gray. <clears throat> and then my secondary background would be whatever I lay on top of uh, that page. So in this case, it's white and in the dark, it's slightly darker or in the dark mode. Okay. Let's set fill color to secondary border radius to 12 and let's add a drop shadow. So you can just do full black and opacity set to 16. Yeah, we need to set the blur to four pixels, the offset to two. And then for that as well, since this list view will be constrained, it'll be uh, scrolling. Let's go ahead and set uh, padding on this card. 12 pixels, 12 pixels and 12 pixels. Cool. Next thing we wanna do is create this card with an image, uh, a border, and then two um, text elements. So we need a column. 
Columns allow you to stack content vertically. In this case, we want the same padding in this card, so we're just gonna do 12 pixels. We're then going to do a image. So drag an image on, set the width to infinity. And then the height to 270 pixels. Let's go ahead and grab this border radius. Let's do 12 pixels. And then you can, for this image, you can just go ahead and grab anything. I, I already have an image from Unsplash I'm gonna use. In order to get the border like we have before, we can just select this image. We can wrap it in a card or a container. Um, and then what we wanna do is set the same border radius. I think we have eight pixels, uh, 12 pixels, so the card will do 12 pixels again. And then select the image again, and let's set the padding to two pixels. For that card, let's set the background to primary BG, and then elevation zero. All right, now we want our title and our subtitle. So let's go ahead and drag our text in. Okay. As you can see, when you drag your text in, it automatically centers. Um, so what we would like to do is actually have it left aligned. So let's select that column. And in the cross axis alignment, you can see here that we can change it, we can span it. Um, we're gonna have it place elements at the start. And then we're going to change this to a title three. Okay. And then you can type whatever you'd like to in the title. I already have this text copied, so I will just paste it in. We want another text. Let's just drag that in. Let's make it body text two. And the top of it could have four pixels padding. And then we just have some lorem ipsum here. Cool. Perfect. And that is our very first card. So uh, you can see the difference um, if, you, if you convert it. We could probably change this uh, padding on this column from 12 to 8. There you go. Then it takes up a little more of the space. Um, let's go ahead and just copy this container, select the list view, and paste it. Command V. So there's our scrolling. Uh, let's go ahead and... You know, we can change the URL for this image. <clears throat> now in an actual list view where you set this from a database, um, you'll want to set your container with, you know, probably eight pixels padding on the left and eight pixels padding on the right, which will allow you to have some padding at the end of this list view. Um, for me, I'm just gonna add 12 pixels padding on this card. So you could essentially do that as well. Cool, there's our horizontal list view. Now let's continue with the vertical one. Let's add a text element here. And again, as we drag it, it's um, center aligned. So let's select that column and cross alignment to the start. Let's change the text to a title three. And let's go ahead and set the padding to 16 pixels on the top and maybe four or 16 paddings on the left and four pixels on the left, on the top. And this will be trainings. <clears throat> cool. Now we have this other vertical list. So we want to drag a list view in. Let's go ahead and do that. Cool. Um, personally, I like it when you have the ability to scroll this horizontally. And then if this list view is like six deep, um, I want to scroll the whole page down and not just this list view. So in order to do that, you can, you can do this very easily. Um, but it does take a few steps. So for this list view, let's go ahead and give it some padding on the top, 12 pixels. That'll give it some space from the, this training setter. Right now you can see it's expanded and it's primary. Let's go ahead and toggle off primary, toggle on shrink wrap, and maybe basically make it unexpanded. This will give us the ability to make this entire column scrollable. But first let's go ahead and create our cards over here. Let's go to the templates. You can easily drag in a template card into this list view. Boom, right there. Now we can 
select this container. Let's go ahead and give it some padding, 16 on the left, 16 on the right. Uh, it doesn't have, or it's not adapted to our theme. So let's go ahead and just change that secondary background color. Let's do title three. This will be um, body text two and then body text one. And then I will just, I'm gonna grab the URL for this guy. You don't have to, there's that. Uh, and then for the sake of this training, um, let's go ahead and just copy this. Let's, let's give this one 12 pixels padding on the bottom. Paste. All right, as you can see, um, this page doesn't scroll. So let's go ahead and select the column and make it scrollable. Cool. And then it'll automatically be the primary. So there you go. You can, um, if you want padding on the bottom, which I usually do, I'll select the list view element and I'll just give it, you know, 24 pixels padding. So um, now we can preview this page. So you have this page, um, you can scroll, you know, horizontally here and the page vertically. You can also toggle on and off dark mode, which I think is one of the coolest features as a designer. I think it's so easy to implement dark light mode in Flutterflow, and we have a whole tutorial on how to do that as well. So thank you again for watching.